We developed a simple tool to illustrate how risk segmentation changes depending on the relative weights of the different factors in the models you apply. So let, let's take a look at what you see on your screen. We have 12 patients and we're looking at three factors. Significant comorbidities, so we have the number of comorbidities there. We have the number of days of their hospital length of stay and the number of psychiatric comorbidities. And then on the right, we have their risk rank relative to all the others in the group. So in the absence of a model, we initially assigned the three risk factors equal weights, as you can see on the screen. Patients ranked in the 1 to 4 risk range are considered high risk. Those ranked in the 9 to 12 range are considered low risk. So you can see that without a model, patients Bingham, Farnham, and Jaworski are appearing as high risk. Now let's look at what happens when you apply a model. First, please note that in a real-world situation, it's generally impractical for individuals to develop their own evidence-based models. But fortunately, there are many different research-based models available for population health risk assessment. These models often include numerous factors and complex algorithms. First, we'll apply Model A, which suggests that the single greatest risk factor is length of hospital stay which is four times more important than psychiatric comorbidities. So we'll assign a four to length of stay and a one to psychiatric comorbidities. Hospital stay is twice as important as significant medical comorbidities. So we'll assign that a two. You can see that now patients Bingham, Dunkirk, Farnham, and Luke are at the highest risk, while patients Chu, Edwards, Herrera, and Cantor are at lowest risk. Let's see how the risk stratification changes for different patients as you apply a different model. Model B suggests that the greatest risk factor is significant medical comorbidities, which are five times more important than length of stay. So we'll change that to a five. And we'll change length of stay to a one. Psychiatric comorbidities are twice as important as length of stay, so we'll change that to a 2. Okay, take a look. Which patients are now at highest risk and which are now at lowest risk? You'll want to take, take a few notes on that. All right, and that is the end of the presentation. Thank you.